With nearly 43,000 stores, Subway is the largest fast food chain in the world. But what really goes on behind the cutting board? Here's what it's really like to work for Subway, according to the people who've served the subs. For being the world's largest restaurant chain, there's surprisingly little actual cooking being done at your neighborhood Subway, despite how fresh they want you to think their food is. It seems like if you can open a bag, you can handle the majority of the so-called prep work being done in the Subway kitchens. According to one person who claims to be an employee, the meats are pre-cooked and pre-sliced, the bread is already kneaded and portioned, and even the lettuce comes pre-shredded for the convenience of every sandwich artist. So don't worry about the culinary skills of the tired-looking team behind the counter. They basically just have to slap everything together. One former employee explained this disappointing reality in an anonymous tell-all on the GameFAQs forums, saying, Frozen meatballs, prepackaged sauce, frozen chicken planks, 100% prepackaged meats, frozen cookie dough, frozen bread dough, prepackaged lettuce, precooked bacon? I think that about covers it. The employee added that this would all be fine if Subway weren't telling customers they could eat fresh. It's out with the old and in with the fresh. Speaking of Subway's Eat Fresh slogan, even the freshness of that bag of pre-shredded lettuce has been called into question, meaning the people who work there may be slinging food they'd rather not eat. Some employees have revealed that in efforts to save money, managers will sometimes keep pushing food past its expiration date. This isn't corporate policy, so don't assume it's happening at every Subway. And one employee's story on Reddit comes to just the sort of resolution you'd hope for. The poster explained how his former manager, in an effort to keep food costs down, would do things like change the expiration dates on certain items so they wouldn't have to be thrown out. The source added, He would also take lettuce in a pan and put it back into the bag. He kept frozen, unbaked bread for over a year. It was so old that the yeast had died, causing the bread not to rise. He was fired after I got fed up and blew the whistle to the franchise owner. But for every brave whistleblower out there, how many more employees are forced to use expired products? Old lettuce and deflated bread may be one thing, but the worst ingredients that employees deal with are Subway's selection of meats. Even when fresh from the plastic packaging, many employees could barely deal with the odor. One employee on Reddit colorfully described it by saying, The packages of ham, turkey, and cold cuts smell like bags of farts. As if that wasn't bad enough, let things sit around a while and it only gets worse. Another former employee explained on a different Reddit thread, avoid chipotle chicken and teriyaki chicken. Why? Chicken is given a two-day shelf life once in the counter. However, these two bypass this and get four days and can get a little stinky. Horrifyingly, a third employee revealed even worse practices, saying chicken teriyaki should be thrown out by the fifth day, but a lot of employees just changed the date to avoid throwing it out. This means with shift changes, varying staff, and other factors, five-day chicken could be out as long as nine days. At some point, employees may be avoiding throwing out that weak old chicken just so they don't have to get close to it, hoping the next poor guy deals with it. Working with expired vegetables and stinky meats is, on some levels, easy to tell. But sometimes, things are not so readily apparent. Subway built its brand on being a healthier alternative in the fast food market. They have a whole menu dedicated to fresh fit eating. Eating healthy at a Subway restaurant is easy. We have so many nutritious choices. And while not exactly part of a perfect diet, light mayo is still better than regular mayo, right? Sure, except when it's not. One viral thread author and former Subway sandwich artist revealed that they could be the exact same thing, revealing, most of the time, whenever the light mayo bottle ran out, my manager would just tell me to fill it with regular mayonnaise. And this is pretty common in a lot of stores. Even if one employee knows that one bottle of mayo is a lie, what about the next shift or the next day? How many part-timers are unknowingly squeezing out false hope of fewer calories? One well-known fact about Subway is that all of those classic veggie fixings are free and you can pile them on just how you like it. Except for avocado, which, like everywhere else in the known universe, is still extra. But what you might not know is that the guidelines for portioning these veggies can be pretty stringent, and the olive allotment is by far the most stingy. One Redditor revealed he was trained to use three olives per six inches, adding, They have all of these precise quantities, and my mean manager would give me hell on earth if I put seven slices on a foot long instead of six. 
So if it seems like the employee has a light touch with those black olives, just politely ask for more. They don't have a personal vendetta against you, they're just following the rules. And they're being watched. Be careful though, another Redditor simply stated, I got fired from Subway for putting too many olives on the sandwiches. Try explaining that on your next job interview. No one would really expect a fast food job to pay the big bucks, but according to some former workers, Subway is just about as low as it can get. As CNN reports, it's so bad that between 2000 and 2013, the U.S. Department of Labor initiated more than 1,100 separate investigations into Subway franchises, leading to over 17,000 Fair Labor Standards Act violations. Subway workers ended up entitled to over $3.8 million in reimbursed wages by 2014. But even when everything is totally above board, Subway might still not be that great as far as employee compensation goes. One employee on Odyssey lamented in 2016, My pay will never change. No matter how long I work for Subway or how well I do my job, my pay will never change. It will always be $7.25 unless I become a manager, then I would get $8.25. More recent reports on Glassdoor suggest that those numbers are still fairly accurate. This seems especially rough when you consider that Subway habitually understaffs the restaurant as well, according to the same employee who added, Usually I'm by myself and I have a whole list of things that I have to do on top of waiting on customers. So if you get frustrated because I'm not standing behind the bar waiting on you immediately when you walk in, I'm sorry but I'm not there just to make your sandwiches. That's a big ask for minimum wage with no real opportunity for improvement. Working in the food service industry, a shift can have some highs and lows. There will probably be more customers at noon than around 4 in the afternoon. That's the same with just about any fast food place. But just because it's busier doesn't necessarily mean the lunch rush is the worst. The lunch customers are usually just trying to cram a sandwich in and get back to work without a fuss. But getting stuck with the dreaded late-night weekend shift is what all employees avoid. And not just because they'd rather be out living it up. According to Viral Thread, one employee explained, This is when we have the drunk revelers and stoners come in. And yes, of course we know when you're stoned. Mainly because I once watched a guy eat three foot-long meatball marineras and a pack of 12 cookies after getting a serious case of the munchies. The employee went on to say that the main issue with the late shift is having to clean up what feels like an endless mess. Everyone has one or two quirky eating habits, and that's perfectly fine. But when you spend your days assembling sandwiches at Subway, you find fun wherever you can, even at the expense of some poor sandwich lover's particularities. Employees usually won't say no to odd requests. They're artists, after all, but you can bet they'll gripe about it later. One former employee complained on Ula, You may think you're being cool and inventive opting for four different sauces on your sandwich, but we honestly judge you for being such a moron. Two sauces? Fine. Any more than that and it just becomes overly sweet gloop that destroys and overpowers the sandwich. Even a fairly mundane order can be subject to ridicule if it's mispronounced, like the very popular chipotle sauce, for example. The employee explained, Chipotle, chipotle, chipolata, chipotle. I don't know what it is about this popular sauce, but most people really don't know how to pronounce it. Subway should really introduce an if you can't say it, you can't order it policy. One of the great things about Subway is the assembly line style method of sandwich production that's been perfected through countless hours of repetition. Customers can get their food quickly and employees can basically work on autopilot. But when some newbie doesn't understand how this system works, it slows everything down and drives everyone up the walls. It ruins the groove that an employee gets into during the rush hour slam. According to Viral Thread, a former employee fumed, There's nothing worse than dealing with a customer who has no idea what they want, and dealing with a subway virgin is a painstaking process. The most annoying thing is that the instructions are clearly written on the counter. It is not just clueless first-timers, either. Another employee complained on Reddit, There is a trend right now at my store where people want a tuna sandwich, but they want the bread and cheese toasted first. It ruins the flow of the sandwich-making process, and it slows down the line. An assembly line works only when it flows in, you know, a line. If everyone is jumping back and forth between stations, it's just chaos.
Despite the fact that your meatball marinara may taste about the same at all 43,000 stores, the frozen and prepackaged goods help ensure that uniformity, of course. Subway is still a franchise operation. That means most Subway locations are owned and operated by different people. Even if two Subways are only blocks apart, there may be two completely separate owners. And that means a total crapshoot on what the work experience is really like. According to Ula, one former employee reflected, I worked at a store with lovely owners who were happy for the workers to have any footlong for lunch. However, I had a friend who worked across town who has nightmare bosses. They weren't allowed any lunch, were forced to buy their uniforms from them, and were constantly watched on CCTV. It's simply the luck of the draw. So if your boss is holding on to stinky meat or just unwilling to hire a second hand for the lunch rush, maybe take your sandwich skills to the subway across the street. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Mashed videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.